Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today, oh snap, the possible problems with Ubuntu. And of course, this is not dealing just with Ubuntu, as snap packages are taking over in the Linux world. We find them all over the place, and nearly every distro can now run them. Are they a good thing? Are they a bad thing? Some people commented on the Ubuntu video where I said, yeah, this is actually a very good distro. Maybe I feel like Ubuntu might be coming back to prime time. Those people came back and said, well, as long as snaps are such a high priority, then maybe I don't want to run it. And so I was like, well, what really is running as a snap package on Ubuntu? Shockingly, the new themes, a lot of your very simple applications like the GNOME Contacts, which I installed, GNOME Calendar, and numerous other applications are actually installed as Snap. Now, it's not like everything, like some people are saying, but there's about a dozen of them installed on Ubuntu. That's a little bit interesting. Now, of course, we're talking here about Snaps. My general opinions would probably apply to all of them, Snaps, App Images, and flat packs. Just a brief summary of these three applications uh, from this uh, post from Medium here, which you can find in the description below. Basically, you have App Image, you have Flat Packs, and you have Snaps. And they're kind of designed for different things. And App Image is more like a completely separate application that doesn't need to be installed. It can run on most distributions. Basically, you can run them as a sandbox. Uh, flat packages, much like that, are in tightly controlled runtime environments. They contain an isolation between applications, which might be a good thing or might be a bad thing, and you can control the resources that it has. Snap packages are generally read-only signed type content, um, in many ways like an application, which makes sense because the snap format was kind of developed as Ubuntu was trying to figure out how to distribute software to Ubuntu Touch when they thought that they were going to have a smartphone that takes over. They are self-contained, and the biggest advantage that these bring is it solves some problems of dependencies, which we will get into a little bit more uh, down the road. So, which problems are solved? Well, primarily it's an issue of dependencies are solved by all of these, but again, we're focusing mostly on Snap. So obviously, if you have a Linux distribution, there's you generally can run easily at least one particular version of any given package on it, unless you're giving it completely different names. This means that the various dependencies that are used uh, in the background of all these different apps, they may or may not actually be compatible with an application you want to install. A snap gets rid of this by packaging all of the dependencies itself inside of the package. So you don't have to have all of those external dependencies installed to make it work. This basically means that you may potentially have different applications that require different versions of dependencies for optimal uh, performance. You can have those all on the same system now because you're not relying on the external system dependencies. Rather, you're relying on the dependencies packaged by the developer into it. The next problem that generally solves is to get an application into any given distribution, so Ubuntu or Mint or Debian or Fedora or any of them, pick your favorite distribution, it has to be picked out and selected and put into the repos for that distribution. This has been a negative with Solace where it did not actually have a lot of uh, a lot of applications, so when it started to allow snap packs, that immediately opened up the doors to all of the Snap availabilities, so you basically had a whole lot of new software that you could install on your Solus machine that the upstream developers of the Solus repo did not actually include in their package managers. And then of course it solved the problem of updating. Uh, some distributions, like my favorite Linux Mint, does not generally update packages as quickly as other ones do, such as Manjaro. For me, that's exactly perfect because I don't want things to update a whole lot more. I want the security bugs to come, come down fixed, and that's fine. I don't really want versions of applications changing. Too many things change, it hurts the production environment that I have, and I don't have time to relearn things when I gotta get a deadline out tomorrow. That's why I like Linux Mint. One of the many reasons why I like Linux Mint is because of that. Snaps, though, allow each package to be 
uh, to be packaged individually. And this will lead to the first of the problem it creates is what if those are abandoned or simply not updated? Well, you can end up with security vulnerabilities that may be fixed by a distro repo that may not be fixed if you are intentionally relying on the producer of the snap package. But it also creates a problem of auditing. And this is an interesting one because in the first case where an app was determined to have uh, something malicious in it, in other words, it had a crypto mining uh, feature, a blog post was released from Canonical and the Snapcraft.io blog where they're looking at this and asking, is it evil? Is it naive? Is it interesting? And then they bring us down to this one fascinating point where the biggest problem that we have, uh, and they say here, even in the inherent complexity of software means it's impossible for large scale repository to only accept software after individual file has been reviewed in detail. That's true, they continue, whether the source code is available or not, as it has no institution can afford to review hundreds of thousands of incoming source code lines every day. Because of that, the most successful trust model is based on the origin of the software, not its content. In other words, trust the publisher rather than the application itself. That is such a massive problem. Of course, who are advertised as these, these big publishers? Well, we have Mozilla, which some people are taking some concern with, myself included. But who else do we have? Amazon, Spotify, Google, Microsoft, data harvesting companies who make their money on collecting and selling data and ads connected to the data that they have. So we want to trust the publishers that are data mining firms. Sure, they might not be putting a virus in there, but what else are they packaging behind the scenes in the snap packs? It makes one wonder, doesn't it? Do we want to trust these publishers? And then of course it brings us to Another feature of these, um, these will utilize more disk resources, more memory resources. And this is a part that it may or may not make a big deal. In this day and age, you know, terabyte hard drives are getting fairly cheap. But of course, hard drives are getting smaller again as people are shift to more SSDs, which are still much more expensive. And so we may not want to be installing a lot of applications that have a whole lot of space being used. That's something else to keep in mind. So to use snap packages or not, what are my general thoughts? Well, first and foremost, I believe that we should be using native packages first. We need to not abandon this idea of your distribution auditing the source code. And we have to stop saying, oh, but, but it, something may have a conflict. Wait until you actually do have a conflict to determine if you want to utilize the snap packages or not. So I think that you should always be using what is what is in the repo first where possible. It may or may not be possible. I've, I've already mentioned Solace, which of course does a good job having a lot, of, they don't have a ton of software, but they have the software they have is all highly compatible. Then they added snap to add more compatibility beyond that. The second thing is um, we should only use our snap packages if we really need help, uh, if we really need to fix some issue, if we are having some dependency problem, if we have some type of conflict, then jump ahead and see if you can install a full complete package separate. That way we don't have um, a lot of the potential concerns with what else could be in this package. So as far as distribution sh should go, I think that snap packages or flat packs or app images, all of these, we should make sure that we know, are we installing something directly from the distro repository or are we installing a snap package? So one of the great things about Linux Mint, they will make it clear to you, is this a flat pack or is this installed in the repo? This could lead to some degrees of potential confusion, which are very easy to educate out of people because you might see two versions of the application. One says Flathub hub, and one does not say anything. I'd rather have that than have pull something up and you don't know if it's a snap package or a flat pack unless they happen to kindly tell you in the description. So back to the question, 
is there a, an issue with the Ubuntu? Well, the latest Ubuntu, it installs a lot of its core components, as we've already seen. It's installed a lot of its core components as snap packages. Things like theme files and simple small applications. It makes you wonder why. It's like they're pushing this harder than they need to be pushing it. So I think that this raises some challenges that just like apps and just like plugins and just like extensions could potentially lead away to malware getting into our systems because they're all bundled up. I think that that raises some concerns that we need to be cognizant of. My recommendation is not to just burn them at the stake. No, we want to utilize these, but we don't want to replace what we're already doing for full packages where we are trusting the developers of the software rather than looking at the code. Because that's why we want to use Linux to make sure that everything is being audited correctly. I do have deep concerns with the snap. Is it going to be enough to me that I completely do away with all these? I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I'm still going to look at the new Ubuntu on my actual production computers. Uh, I will have a look at it and I'll kind of make it a determination then. But for now, just keep that in mind. When you're installing something on Ubuntu, it might be installing as a snap package. And for some people, that is a big negative because they're not auditing these packages. They're trusting the developers. And is that something we necessarily want to do? I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.